What are constructed wetlands? Constructed wetlands treat wastewater and promote a healthy ecosystem in numerous ways. They provide additional volume for removal of suspended solids and sediment accumulation, which helps avoid the process of eutrophication by reducing the concentrations of nitrate and phosphate, as well as breaking down organic matter in the water. Now, let's talk materials. In a standard wetland, you would also see the soil layered with a sandy layer on top, which promotes drainage and a decrease in particle size of the soil as you go down deeper. The smaller particles help filter the water as it goes down towards the ground table. We did not have fancy aquatic plants, nor the proper soil, because we are neither rich nor mother nature. Instead, we use plants plucked from a North Carolina yard, along with the soil to match. Our soil contains a large amount of clay and silt, but we did find some sand too, so it's a decent mix. In a standard wetland, you'll see numerous plants, like the... Elodia canadensis, Calitrish corfocapa, Sparganium, Ranunculus peltatus. They tend to sit within the water, on the topsoil, in places where the water is shallow enough for some plants to emerge, while others are completely submerged. They are crucial to the wetland because they assist in slowing down the water, as well as taking in nutrients. We begin by lining the tank with plastic mulch. This will keep the medium from running off, and in full-scale wetlands, it also keeps the wastewater from escaping before treatment. Next came the previously mentioned soil. We put it at an angle so the water could flow through it and filter out while slowing down. We later realized that we should have relied more on the plants to slow down the water rather than the soil, but this was a learning experience after all, so mistakes were imminent. Now it was time for the gravel bed. We collected rocks, with permission, from an already in place gravel bed that was being used for the same purpose we needed them for. The gravel dissipates the concentrated inflow of the storm water as it passes through. Once the rocks were all in place, we moved on to what we later learned would be the star of our wetland, the plants. There should have been 10 times as many plants here because as stated earlier, vegetation plays a huge role in treatment of wastewater and it helps slow down water so it doesn't destroy everything in its path. Slower water also aids in treatment because it increases residence time for sedimentation to occur and for nutrients to be absorbed by the plants. With it all assembled, we set up the camera and stepped aside to watch a masterpiece unfold. And it didn't exactly go the way we planned. The flow was too fast so we ended up with horrible flooding. The water was running off on the land and into our clean water reservoir. Test run number two went much better. With only a drip, we had to wait a while to see our results, but that's as to be expected, because wetlands also take time to treat stormwater that comes in. Now I should note that by treatment, we are really talking about the removal of pollutants that breaks down into the movement of electrons. Let's talk about electrons. As water flows into the wetland, it brings with it a variety of pollutants. These pollutants will eventually settle down at the bottom of the wetland, where the magic of electron transfer begins. Constructed wetlands are effective at removing suspended particulates from the water flowing through them. Total suspended solids or organic matter is generated naturally within a wetland from dead algae and microbes, fragmented plants, and the formation of chemical precipitates such as iron sulfide. Wetlands are able to remove these solids from the water through a process of flocculation and settling of particles, which are effective in the constructed wetland due to the relatively low velocity of the water and the high surface area of the wetland. These systems act like horizontal gravel filters and separate out TSS through gravity sedimentation, straining, and adsorption of the biomass film attached to the gravel and root systems found throughout the wetland. Now let's talk about biochemical removal techniques. Within the first couple of centimeters of the soil, there is oxygen available for aerobic respiration to take place. In aerobic respiration, oxygen can be used as an electron acceptor, and organic matter is an electron donor. Electrons from organic matter are taken by the oxygen, which breaks down the organic matter to carbon dioxide, phosphate, hydrogen sulfide, and ammonium, while oxygen is converted into water. This breaking down of organic matter is an important part of the wetland function. The breakdown of organic matter for the microorganism's consumption is done by oxidative and reductive reactions, along with hydrolysis and photolysis. The most efficient way to convert organic matter into the mineralized end products is known as aerobic metabolism, which requires dissolved oxygen. Also occurring in the aerobic layer of the soil is nitrification, where the ammonium created from the decomposition from the mineralized end products. It is transformed into nitrate with the available oxygen. The oxygen is quickly used up in the first few centimeters of soil, so there needs to be other electron acceptors in the place of oxygen. The first one that is used in place of oxygen is nitrate. When nitrate is the electron acceptor, organic matter is still broken down into its byproducts, and nitrate is turned into dinitrogen. This process is known as denitrification. Denitrification is a crucial part of wetland function because of its ability to convert the pollutant nitrate into a substance that is unreactive. Once all of the nitrate is used as an electron acceptor, there are other substances that take its place, such as manganese, iron, and sulfate. However, here are some problems and solutions that can be encountered when dealing with wetlands. In our research, we've discovered that a main issue with the efficiency of wetlands is lack of oxygen. Fountains and aerators are used to boost oxygen levels, but it's not enough to reduce the gradient and balance the oxygen supply and demand. 
Some communities are against implementing wetlands near public areas because slow-flowing water is conducive to insect growth, specifically mosquitoes, which spread deadly diseases. However, if a wetland is properly populated with fish that eat mosquitoes, like the mosquito fish, then they become manageable. Another concern is that wetland construction is expensive, but the only maintenance work required is mowing the lawn and occasionally cleaning out sediment buildup. The pros of wetlands include that they promote biodiversity, they're relatively cheap compared to wastewater treatment plants, they store carbon dioxide and prevent its release into the atmosphere, they reduce nutrient pollutant levels in waterways and also promote sedimentation and they trap sediment in bends in deep pools. Some cons, however, include that they use a substantial amount of land, cannot resist droughts, 